Good evening, and welcome to the first night of reInvent 2022. And that's why tonight, I'm excited to introduce the latest generation of Nitro chip, the Nitro V5 chip. Now this new Nitro chip continues the tradition of delivering significantly improved performance. Nitro V5 is an impressive chip. It has about twice the transistors as the previous generation Nitro chip, which gives it about twice the computational power. It also has 50% more memory bandwidth and a PCIe adapter that provides about twice the bandwidth. And all of this means that it's able to support 60% higher packet per second rate with a 30% reduction in packet latency. And my favorite part about all this is we did it while reducing overall power. And what fun would it be for me to announce a new Nitro chip if we didn't have a new EC2 instance for you to try it out on? So I'm excited to announce the C7GN network optimized EC2 instance. This is the first instance that'll be based on the Nitro V5 card. The C7GN is a Graviton 3 based instance designed to deliver improved networking performance for the most network-intensive workloads. The C7GN will provide 200 gigabits per second of throughput and up to 50% higher packet processing performance over previous generation C6GN, which was our last network-optimized instance. So tonight, we're pre-announcing the Amazon EC2 HPC 7G instance. The HPC 7G provides the networking capabilities of the Nitro V5 chip with the new Graviton 3E processor. With the HPC 7G, we offer even better price performance combined with leading energy efficiency for a host of real-world HPC applications. So I'm excited to announce that starting early next year, all new EBS IO2 volumes will be running with SRD. Ina Express brings SRD technology and its benefits mainstream by allowing you to bring it to any network interface. It's totally transparent to your application and it works with normal operating system network protocols like TCP and UDP. You don't need to install any additional software or change your, change your instance. You simply enable ENA Express on your ENA interface and you'll start getting the benefits of lower latency and higher throughput. Wouldn't it be great if we had a Trainium instance with an even faster network? So tonight, I'm excited to announce a network-optimized Trainium-based instance, the TRN1N. The TRN1N will offer 1.6 terabits a second of low-latency EFA-optimized network bandwidth. This will accelerate innovation by allowing builders to train ultra-large models with even greater efficiency. Well, tonight, I'm excited to announce Lambda Snapstart. <laughs> Lambda Snapstart significantly decreases the Lambda cold start time. Snapstart is built on firecracker snapshotting functionality and a few innovations I'll describe in a second. And snapshots available tonight at no additional cost. So, if there's one thing I hope you take away from tonight, besides the beer, it's that performance work is never done, which is why at AWS we're always innovating to provide you the best performance at the lowest cost without compromising on security. Across everything from custom silicon to nitro to the latest EC2 instances to pushing the boundaries of serverless computing, we will continue to innovate to provide the best performance. Now, in our short time this evening, I've only been able to cover a fraction of the investments we're making across AWS. Fortunately, we have a number of sessions throughout the week that go much deeper, as well as discuss other performance-related innovations. I've picked out a few of my favorites and encourage you to check them out. As always, I've had a great time sharing a little peek underneath the hood of AWS. Thank you for coming to Monday Night Live and enjoy the rest of reInvent.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to AWS reInvent. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It is great to be back here with all of you at our 11th reInvent. And I'm happy to welcome over 50,000 customers and partners here in Las Vegas and over 300,000 attendees registered virtually around the world. It's amazing. We're also taking a leading stance in sustainability. Personally, to me, I think it's the issue of our generation. And Amazon is now the world's largest corporate purchaser of renewable energy. We're committed to powering our operations with 100% renewable energy by 2025, and we're already on target and over 85% of the way there. And we're also investing to... Please, everyone, get involved. It's a problem for all of us. And we're also innovating to improve our water use efficiency. And we're leading amongst cloud provider with an efficiency metric of 0.25 liters of water consumed per kilowatt hour in our data centers. And as we announced Sunday, we're committing to becoming water positive by 2030. That means we will return more water to our communities than we use in direct operations. Very excited about that. Now, you may have noticed from the previous slide, if you're paying very close attention, that one of the analytics services is not like the others. Most have serverless options, but we have a single analytic service that doesn't yet have a serverless option. And many of you have been asking us, when can we get a serverless option for open search? Well, that time is now. And today we're announcing the preview of open search serverless. You can use this platform to perform interactive analytics, real-time application monitoring, website search, and more without having to worry about provisioning configuring, and scaling infrastructure. Now we have serverless options for all of our analytic services, and no one else can say that. So today, I'm excited to announce the preview of a fully managed new zero ETL integration between Aurora and Redshift. This integration brings together transactional data with analytics capabilities eliminating all of the work of building and managing custom data pipelines between Aurora and Redshift. It's incredibly easy. You just choose the Aurora tables combining the, uh, containing the data that you want. In order to get that into Redshift, it appears within seconds. After it comes into Aurora, seconds later, the data is seamlessly made available inside of Redshift. And you can replicate data from multiple Aurora databases in the same Redshift instance. The data in Redshift is always consistent and updates are automatically and continuously propagated. So you have the most recent information in near real time. And of course, the entire system is serverless and dynamically scales up and down based on the data volume so there's no infrastructure to manage. Now you really have the best of both worlds. Fast scalable transactions in Aurora together with scalable analytics in Redshift all in one seamless system. This newest integration helps solve one of the biggest ETL pain points for our customers. And I'm really excited to introduce Amazon Redshift integration for Apache Spark. Now it's incredibly easy to run Apache Spark applications on Redshift data from AWS Analytics Services. You can use simple Spark jobs or Jupyter notebooks in AWS services like EMR, Glue, and SageMaker to connect to Redshift and to run read-write queries against Redshift tables. Now, no more need to move any data, no need to build or manage any connectors. Today, I am very happy to announce Amazon DataZone, a man man data management service that helps catalog, discover, share, and govern data across your organization. DataZone enables you to set data free throughout the organization safely by making it easy for admins and data stewards to manage and govern access to data. And it makes it easy for data engineers, data scientists, product managers, analysts, and other business users to discover, use, and collaborate around that data to drive insights for your businesses. So today, I'm really happy to announce ML-powered forecasting with Q. 
With forecasting in Q, a business user looking at a dashboard can simply ask Q to forecast a metric into the future. For example, you could ask Q to forecast sales for the next 12 months and get an immediate response which considers seasonality, anomalies, and outliers to form the best forecast. We've also added why questions in Q, so you can dig deep and understand past events and trends that impact the forecast. So today, I'm really pleased to announce a new capability of guard duty that adds container runtime threat detection. Now guard duty will help detect threats from software running inside your container by monitoring operating system level behavior in the container itself, such as file access, process execution, and network connections. It can detect an attempt to access underlying compute nodes and obtain an instance uh, credentials, or identify a container that's trying to communicate with a malicious actor's command and control server. I'm absolutely thrilled to announce the preview of Amazon Security Lake. <laughs> Security Lake is a data lake that makes it easy for security teams to automatically collect, to combine, and to analyze security, security data at petabyte scale. La yesterday, last night, Peter DeSantis announced the new C7GN instance, powered by Graviton3, which has over 200 gigabits per second network bandwidth and up to 50% higher packet processing over existing network optimized instances. This makes C7GN ideal for network intense workloads and uh, things like analytics, databases, and network appliances. I'm excited to announce the preview of our Inf2 instance powered by our new Inferentia 2 chip. Customers can deploy a 175 billion parameter model for inference on a single Inf2 instance with four times higher throughput and one tenth the latency of Inf1 instances. We're announcing the new HPC 6ID instances. 6ID, 6ID instances are designed to deliver leading price performance for data and memory intensive HPC workloads with higher memory bandwidth per core faster local SSD storage, and enhanced networking with Elastic Fabric Adapter. With 6A, 7G, and 6ID, AWS offers HPC instances with the best price performance for each of your specific workloads. So today, I'm very excited to announce AWS SimSpace Weaver, a new managed service for running large-scale spatial simulations. With SimSpace Weaver, you can run large-scale simulations without being constrained by a single piece of hardware or having to manage the underlying compute, memory, or networking infrastructure. And this means that developers can spend more time building and understanding their simulations and less time deploying and scaling them. First, we're introducing new forecasting, capacity planning, and scheduling capabilities to help contact center managers very helpful to help them optimize agent schedules and ensure that they have the right agents at the right time. Second, we're previewing new agent performance management capabilities in contact lens, connects real-time analytics. These reduce the time that contact center managers spend identifying performance issues and, and, uh, and helping to coach agents. And third is a new user interface that guides, customer, uh, guides agents through customer interactions so they can resolve issues even faster. <laughs> Connect is a great example of how the cloud is removing constraints to reimagine business challenges like delivering better customer service. AWS CleanRooms is a new service that helps companies and their business partners to securely analyze and collaborate on data sets without sharing or revealing the underlying data. And that's why today I'm very excited to announce the general availability of Amazon Omics. <laughs> Omics is a purpose-built service to store, query, analyze, and generate insights from genomic and other Omics data. How many times have you ever been in a crowded store and the line to pay is so long that you just want to bail? Have you ever thought to yourself, Wow, I wish I could just walk out. 
and now you can. A few years ago, a few years ago, a group of Amazonians started thinking about how they could make the store experience better. And with a combination of computer vision, sensor data, and deep learning, Just Walk Out technology by Amazon was born. With Just Walk Out technology, a customer can scan their phone when they walk into a store, take what they want, and leave. No standing in lines to check out anymore. But we didn't stop there. We started thinking about the other places where you have to stand in line. So waiting in line to get into a stadium, or badging into work. Remember that, badging into work? So this led to Amazon One, a new simple way to identify, enter, and pay with your palm. Yep, your palm. To identify yourself and automatically pay so you can just walk out. Now, you don't even need your phone. You can buy an item or enter a venue with just a wave of your palm. So we've just gone through a few of the examples of how customers are reimagining entire industries and business functions using purpose-built solutions on AWS. They're driving such momentum in this area, that we're going to continue to innovate even more here going forward. Thank you so much to everyone watching. And of course, a big thank you to my guests on stage, and a big thank you to the whole AWS team for making this entire week and today possible. We have an amazing reInvent for you this year, so please go out there and explore it. Thank you. The Vice President of Data and Machine Learning at AWS Dr. Swami Siva Subramanian. Welcome to day three of reInvent, everyone. That's why today I am thrilled to announce Amazon Athena for Apache Spark, <laughs> which allows you to start running interactive analytics on Apache Spark in just under one second. Just yesterday, we announced Amazon Redshift integration for Apache Spark, which makes it easier for running Spark applications on Redshift data from other AWS analytics services. This integration enables EMR applications to access Redshift data to run up to 10x faster compared to existing Redshift Spark connectors. And with a fully certified Redshift connector, you can quickly run analytics and ML without compromising on security. That's why I'm pleased to announce the general availability of Amazon Document DB Elastic Clusters, a fully managed solution for document workloads of virtually any size and scale. I'm really excited to announce that Amazon SageMaker now supports new geospatial ML capabilities. I'm honored to introduce Amazon Redshift Multi-AC, a new multi-AC configuration that delivers the highest levels of reliability. Today, I'm excited to announce trusted language extensions for Postgres, a new open source project that allows developers to securely leverage Postgres extensions on RDS and Aurora. Built for Amazon Aurora, I'm very excited to announce the preview of Guard Duty RDS protection, which provides intelligent threat detection in just one click. To help our customers do this, I'm pleased to share the preview of AWS Glue Data Quality, a new feature of AWS Glue. So today, I'm pleased to introduce a new feature in Redshift data sharing, centralized access controls that allow you to govern your Redshift data shares using Lake Formation Console. <laughs> to address this for our customers, we are bringing you three new machine learning governance capabilities for Amazon SageMaker, including SageMaker Role Manager, Model Cards, and Model Dashboards. We are launching Amazon Data Zone, a data management service that helps catalog, discover, analyze, share, and govern data across your organization, thereby bringing your transactional data sitting in Aurora 
to the analytics capabilities in Redshift together. Today, I'm excited to announce Amazon Redshift now supports auto copy from S3 to make it easier to continuously ingest your data. That's why today, I'm pleased to share the release of 22 new Outflow connectors, including popular marketing sources like LinkedIn Ads and Google Ads. In addition to offering new connectors in Appflow, we are also doing the same for Data Wrangler in SageMaker. While SageMaker already supports popular data sources like Databricks and Snowflake, today we are bringing you more than 40 new connectors through SageMaker Data Wrangler, allowing you to implement and import even more of your data for ML model building and training. With access to all of these data sources, you can realize the full value of your data across your SaaS services. That's why today, I'm personally very proud to announce a new educator program for community colleges and MSIs through AWS MLU. So the three elements of a modern data strategy I shared with you this morning, building future-proof data foundations, weaving connected tissue, and democratizing data across your organization. All of them play a critical role in helping you do more with your data. But if I can leave you with only one thing today, please remember, it's individuals who ultimately create these parts, but it is the responsibility of leaders to empower them with a data-driven culture to help them get there. Now, go create the next big invention. Thank you. Please welcome the Vice President and Chief Technology Officer of Amazon.com, Dr. Werner Vogels. Hello, Vegas. So I'm happy to, uh, to uh, announce today that we're now giving fundamental support to this pattern using AWS Step Functions Distributed Map. That basically, it, I didn't build it. Uh, go talk to the guys that actually built this stuff and give them the applause. Uh, because listening to our customers is really important. So what we can do with these Step Functions and actually, in the distributed map, is basically do a map and a reduce step very easily. So it starts off with uh, using the uh, step functions distributed map, which then will fire up maybe a thousand of instances of your Lambda functions to process the data and then summarize that data in the final Lambda stuff. So today, very happy to announce AWS Application Compo Composer which simplifies and accelerates the architecting, the configuring, and building of serverless applications. <laughs> Amazon Event Bridge Pipes, which allow you <laughs> which allow you easily to stitch AWS services together. Yeah? And it's a new feature specifically designed for integrating messages from different AWS services. Uh, and so it is a point-to-point, -point, event producers, event consumers, and a way to manipulate the events that actually flow through the pipe. Uh, so the idea is that you should be able to no longer have to eliminate, they no longer have to write the glue code. You can easily stitch these services two together. And if you would want to actually manipulate the events before they reach the consumer, you can actually either provide a Lambda function or a point to a step function, so API gateway, to actually run some code to manipulate um, the, the events that are flowing through your pipe. And it has built-in filtering, meaning that if you only want to get a real subset of the events that needs to flow to the consumer, you can add that too. 
So basically, this is pipes on steroids. Yeah, because it's not just easily composable, it's actually also an ability to manipulate the events that are flowing through your pipe. I'd like to announce today Amazon Code Catalyst that takes away all the heavy lifting that sits around development. Now, we've built this with developers, teams, and cloud in mind. Yeah, it really helps you to sort of plan and develop and collaborate and deliver applications on AWS. It has all the tools you need to go from idea to production much faster.